In this example, we're going to use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is some c in the open interval AB for which f of c is equal to k. Now that statement is really in the conclusion of the intermediate value theorem, so we're, what we are going to first have to show is that all of the hypotheses for the intermediate value theorem are met so that we get the conclusion for free. After that, we're going to be using a graph to approximate those values of C. And I've gone ahead and graphed on, um, on our coordinate plane here with the endpoints uh, negative 2 and 4 listed. Um, I've gone ahead and graphed the polynomial that we have here for f of x. So let's look at this. Uh, we're trying to use the intermediate value theorem, and the intermediate value theorem starts with needing the function to be continuous. So let's take a look at this function. It's a polynomial, and polynomials are continuous everywhere. And so in particular, they're going to be continuous on a closed interval. And so we can go ahead and say that f of x is continuous on the closed interval, and the interval that we're looking at is negative 2 to 4. So we'll go ahead and list that. Now, there wasn't really anything to show there. It was just acknowledging that you knew that that was important to um, assess first. And this is continuous um, everywhere, so continuous on the closed interval we get for free. So now the second thing that we have to assess is where this k is. This k equals negative 4 is given, and we need to know that k is between the function values that we get when we plug in the endpoints of the given interval. So let's go ahead and plug in those endpoints of the given interval. So we will plug in negative 2, and when we do that, uh, we've got negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 minus 2, and you should be able to plug that in and get out the value negative 22. If you plug in the other endpoint of 4, um, you've got a 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 minus 2. And if you do that, you should get the output value of 14. And making these computations is fine, but you've got to say uh, the important step is to say that you have that k value of negative 4 in between the two values that you computed there. So that's really the hypothesis. We made these computations so that we could say that this other hypothesis is met. So the other hypothesis is that k equals negative 4 is between um, the f of negative 2, which was negative 22, and um, the f of 4, which is 14. So since we had f was continuous on a closed interval and we had that the k value was between the function values, then we're ready for our conclusion. And the conclusion comes from free as soon as we have um, noted those two things. So the conclusion would be that um, by the intermediate value theorem, and I'll just write IVT for intermediate value theorem, um, we say that there is a c. And that C is in the open interval, um, let's be specific, since we were given the interval negative 2 to 4, we'll go ahead and say that. Uh, there is a C in the open interval negative 2 to 4, such that uh, F of C is equal to K, and that K given was negative 4. Okay. So now the intermediate value theorem only guarantees that there is one such um, C value, but we could have more than one C value, and we certainly also don't know specifically where that C value is without assessing things further. And so that's where we're going to come into uh, the graphical sort of thing, just to see what's happening here. So here's my graph of the function. Um, negative 4 would be right about here on the uh, y-axis, so that would be our k value. And so if we look at all of the places where y is equal to negative 4 there, we see that we find three points that uh, that horizontal line intersects our uh, cubic function uh, in between the x equals negative 2 and x equals uh, positive 4. And so we're really looking at those three uh, corresponding x values as three c values that we get from the conclusion of the intermediate value theorem. So this gives an example where we see that the c is not unique. Um, but again, we don't have any other um, great assessment of where these are, except we see that one time it happens to be in the negative x's, and then twice it happens to be in the positive x's. 
And um, perhaps if we had the scaling here on the x-axis, uh, maybe some of these are nice numbers, maybe some of them aren't, um, but we could algebraically get what they are, possibly. It always depends on the function when we're talking about solving cubic equations. So I do want to go ahead and show you what it would look like to solve this algebraically, um, just to give you a sense of the fact that this is a hard problem. So we are given that cubic, um, and then the k value of negative 4. So if we want to find the x values where our f of x is equal to k, um, what we have to do is take that uh, cubic equation, uh, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2 is equal to the negative 4. And we want to solve that cubic equation, which means the first step we've got to do is get everything to one side equal to 0. So we add 4 to both sides, and that leaves us with x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. Now that's a cubic equation. Sometimes we can find um, exact solutions, sometimes we can't, or sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's difficult. If this were a quadratic, we could use the quadratic formula to get the two or perhaps repeated solution, um, but this is not a quadratic. And so the best we can do really is to utilize the graph that we had to possibly, um, if, if any of those look like nice numbers, we could kind of narrow down our search here. And it does happen that there is one nice solution. So I'm going to say notice here. Uh, if we were to plug in 1, we would have 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared plus 2. We would get 0. So what that's telling us is that uh, x equals 1 is a solution. Or is a root, we could say. Okay? And uh, really that ends up being the uh, C2 value from our, our graph over here. The C2 that we had, uh, this ends up being the 1. Uh, if we had the scaling on the x-axis, we could see that. But C2 was the nice value of 1 that we could get from um, just inspection on the graph. Okay, So we have our C2 is equal to 1. Okay, so what that is telling us there is that uh, x equals 1 being a root is also telling me that uh, the factor x minus 1 is a factor of that cubic x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2 because, see, I'm looking for roots of the one with the plus 2 on it once I added the 4 over. Okay, since we have a single factor of a cubic, if we were to do long division here, we could do x minus 1 into that cubic. Um, what we would get as the other factor would be a quadratic. And from quadratics, we could use the quadratic formula and be done. So we need to figure out what that quadratic is. So we compute this using long division. Uh, we ask ourselves, x times what gives me x cubed? So I know that's going to be x squared. And then I do the multiplication. x squared times x is x cubed. And then I have x squared times negative 1, which would be negative x squared. I draw my line and I subtract. And so when I subtract the x cubes cancel, leaving me with negative 3x squared and then the minus a negative, which would be adding another x squared, leaving me with negative x, 2x squared. And then I carry on the plus 2. We repeat this process, asking ourselves x times what gives me negative 2x squared. So that would be a negative 2x. Uh, multiplying that out, I've got the negative 2x squared. And then the negative 2x times negative 1 switches it to positive. 2x. I draw the line and I subtract. And when I do that, the negative 2x squares cancel. And that leaves me with the subtracting 2x. So I've got negative 2x and then the plus 2 that I'm carrying from the top line there. And then the last step here would be the x times what gives me negative 2x. So that would be subtracting 2. And when I multiply that out, I've got negative 2x, and then the negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. So then, of course, when I take that and I subtract, I don't have anything left over. Remainder of 0, which we knew because we knew that x minus 1 was a factor. So, to get the remaining two um, c values, I need to find the roots of this quadratic. So, uh, here we need the roots. So to get the roots, we've got a quadratic e equation, um, x squared minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0, and that left-hand side does not factor, and so we can use the quadratic formula to get my other two roots there. 
So x would be equal to negative b, so that'd be negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that'd be the negative 2 in parentheses squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 2, all over 2a, so all over 2 times 1. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and clean this up. We've got um, the negative negative 2, which would be a positive 2, plus or minus. We've got negative 2 squared, which is 4. And then we've got uh, minus 4 times 1 times negative 2, which would be plus 8. So we're looking at um, a plus or minus root 12 there all over uh, 2. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. All over 2 times 1, so that'd be 2. So underneath the square root, we see... Um, the 12, which does have a perfect square factor of 4. So we might want to think about this as like a 4 times 3 underneath the square root. So when we take the square root of 4, that would be 2, leaving us with just the 3 under the square root. And we can simplify this a bit more by um, pulling out the common factor of 2 from the two terms separated by the plus minus on the top, leaving us with 1 plus or minus the root 3, and then we see that that 2 that I pulled out cancels with the 2 in the bottom, leaving me with 1 plus or minus square root of 3. Okay, So that gives me the two roots to the quadratic factor. Um, and so those would be the remaining two roots. So let's, let's compute this. If we have the 1 plus root 3, that's approximately equal to uh, 2.732. And so you can see back here on our picture that that would be uh, this, this one right here, the C3. So that would be equal to the 1 plus root 3. Okay, That would be about in the right spot. Okay, So that would be our C3. Now if we do the 1 minus root 3, that is approximately equal to negative point, uh, let's see, 732. Okay, And we can see back here on the picture that we had, that that would be our C1. That would be the 1 minus root 3, okay, for our C1. And so those algebraically would be our three C values that all happen to be in between the um, A, which was negative 2, and the B, which was 4. Um, so those are our three values that we could get algebraically that we saw uh, graphically, and that we were able to guarantee that at least one of them existed based on the intermediate value theorem.